What's going on everybody? I'm Jiffy Nano, and today we have another Godfall video going over some of the news we got on actual loot and some of the skills in the game. Just last week, IGN did an interview with Counterplay Games technical producer Dick Hain, talking about some of the specifics of Godfall's loot and progression, and included in this article is what I believe is our first look at the skill grid and augment constellations. This is a really cool article and has a lot of screenshots of the menus, skills, and a few augments, so if you want to look at these yourself, I'll have it linked in the description below. So, the first thing they touch on is how they designed the loot in Godfall. They mentioned that they wanted this game to be the Tinkerer's Dream, so players who want to mess with items and stats can see the impact immediately, granting a wide array of options. Personally, I think this is really cool. I love messing with builds, I love making things work together, play off each other, stuff like that, but sometimes min-maxing a build to the point of a 1 or 2% difference isn't super fun, and the actual difference that tiny increase is negligible and almost unnoticeable in gameplay, so being able to see the impact of your changes is a great thing for newer players to godfall in loot-based RPGs, and it grants a sense of satisfaction when you see the idea that you're working on actually come together in the gameplay. The next thing that they mentioned that was big with their loot design was the aesthetics. They set out to make the progression just as much about earning the right to look badass as it was to gaining actual strength in game. Hain notes in the article, quote, Once we had the visual hierarchy established for the weapons, we were able to think about, would I chase this weapon for hours just off visual appeal? Not thinking about how it functions or how the player is going to experience it beyond visuals, but just the visual alone. Would I chase this? End quote. He then goes on to say once they had that established, the item in question was sent off to design and gameplay programming, mentioning that it wasn't all flash with no bang, and that for them it's a satisfaction of how you look at the beginning of the game compared to the end, and that you as a player should be proud of what your character and arsenal look like. So if you've ever played Dark Souls or Warframe, you know all about the true end game, fashion. But in all seriousness, there's a lot of value in making your gear in a looter like this make your character look badass. Not to seem like I'm bashing it, but this is something I think Borderlands, for example, misses out on. Lots of weapons, but they all stem from the same handful of base models, and there's very few that stand out to me on visual appeal alone. Meanwhile, in things like Destiny, Diablo, and the Soulsborne games, making your character look cool to most players is just as important as making your build function properly. So all in all, I do think this is a good thing, but I hope it doesn't really get in the way of the actual abilities that these loot pieces have. The next thing they discussed was the skill grid, saying, quote, we really just wanted there to be maximal flexibility with the skill grid. We wanted to avoid choice paralysis because Godfall combat can be quick, it can be snappy, it's action packed, and if every two levels you're having to open your UI menu, read each individual skill, decide the best path for you. It wasn't synonymous with what Godfall is and would really hinder the player's experience, end quote. They go on to say that they want the game to be fluid and combat focused, so they don't want to marry you to your choices, letting you respec whenever you want, and the skill point system being universal across all Valor plates, so you don't have to grind levels to get the most out of your class. This, in tandem with the Augment Constellation, should give a lot of player choice, variety of builds, and playstyles. So, I really like what they're going for here, even though I know some players would prefer to have to grind out each plate just to have more to do. Personally, I like the idea of a more universal and fluid experience going from one Valor plate to another and being able to customize everything right there, but I do hope that the end game activities that they detailed a while ago are robust enough to keep this game interesting after you finish leveling your character. The second to last thing they talk about is the crafting system for the trinkets, weapons, and other Valor plates. Hein goes to say that they set out to make the crafting system as streamlined as they could. You have the ability to swap out gear in the field, but once you're at the Sanctum, you can use the Forge to enchant, upgrade, and tweak with ease. Upgrading items is how you increase its level so you can bring that item along with you as you level your character. Enchanting, however, is boosting the item's rarity to the next level, giving it better stats and secondary abilities. I'll have screenshots on screen right now so you can see what these menus look like, but Hein continues to say that they didn't want to force players into activities they don't enjoy, and even though there are some crafting materials that can only be found in certain areas of the game, there should be plenty of activities that will naturally push you towards those areas, and you should be able to fill out your armory without feeling like you're being slowed down, and they want the player to feel like their time is being respected. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one. I, On one hand, it's nice that they're trying to respect the player's time. A lot of games right now are going for a games as a service route, which can cause the game to be a huge time sink for sometimes very little payoff. Games like Destiny and Diablo come to mind here. But at the same time, that time sink, if done well, can also add a lot to that game's overall life and endgame. So kind of like the skill points being universal, I'm hoping that the endgame activities will be robust enough to make up for this. So the last thing that Dickine talks about in this interview is about trinkets and how they're the last final touch when it comes to your character. Trinkets being your amulet, rings, and charm have unique traits that tie into the various playstyles you can pursue in the game. 
but they don't cause any visual change to your character. That being said, he mentions that the right trinkets with the right build should bring the character all together and round everything out. So, what do you all think of what we know about Godfall's loot and progression so far? Personally, I'm very excited to dig into all these pieces and really explore this so-called Tinkerer's Dream, although I am a bit concerned when it comes to the overall longevity of the game, with a lot of the systems being very streamlined and universal across the Valor Plates. But you all let me know in the comments what you think. Are you concerned with the same things I am? Do you like that everything's universal and the carries over from plate to plate? Or do you hate it? If you want to talk more about Godfall and other looters and shooters, consider checking out my Twitch channel, link in the description. And if you want to see more videos like this one and guides and builds that I have planned for Godfall when it finally releases, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.